In this video, we're going to learn a gamelous rune application problem, uh, which is uh, drug testing. Suppose we have uh, two types of uh, new drugs um, to treat a certain disease, and uh, um, we have P sub i. I is 1 and 2 are the cure rate of uh, drug I. All right. Um, and we want to design an experiment that uh, to determine whether uh, P1 is bigger than P2, or P2 is bigger than P1. So our goal is to design uh, an experiment to determine P1 is greater than or uh, P1 is less than P2. Uh, even though, uh, from a clinical point of view, uh, this experiment may sound kind of absurd, but uh, uh, let's consider the following uh, experiment. Uh, we have um, A pair of patients, and we we're treating these two patients with uh, drug one or two. All right. What happens is we define the following quantity. That's uh, x sub j. X sub j is one if the patient um, in the jth pair who receives uh, drug one is cured. and zero otherwise. And we define another um, random variable, which is y sub j is one, is if the patient in the jth pair who receives uh, drug 2 is cured and 0 otherwise and let me draw a simple diagram here so we have uh, patient 1 all right and we have uh, patient 2 uh, patient 1 receives drug one and patient two receives drug, uh, drug two. And these two patients are our uh, jth pair. Uh, it, could, it could be possibly uh, that patient one is cured while patient two is not um, and vice versa. Also, it could be that patient one and patient two are cured, um, are all cured, or patient one and patient two are both not cured. And let, let, let's write down the, uh, the probability, right? So the probability of uh, patient one is cured
while patient two is not, is essentially uh, because we assume the treating are independent. So this is essentially a P sub one, which is a cure rate of the, the drug one times one minus P sub two. And this means patient two is not cured, which is one minus the cure rate of drug two. And similarly, we can write down this uh, P1 is not cured and P2 is cured. which is uh, uh, P2 is cured, multiply with P1 is uh, patient one is not cured. And uh, um, it could possible be the third case, that is uh, uh, P1 and P2 are both cured or P1 and P2 are both not cured uh, because this or of these two mutually exclusive event uh, it's just a summation of uh, the probability of this event and this event. For the first event, we have they are both cured. It means we have P1 times P2. Uh, they are both not cured. Is just 1 minus P1 times 1 minus P2. Then our experiments uh, wanted to check the following quantity. So we have a predetermined margin for this uh, predetermined margin. Uh, we want to consider the following quantity uh, that is x1 plus till x little n subtract uh, y1 plus till uh, y sub n. All right, and uh, what does this quantity mean? This is uh, uh, essentially number of patients cured by uh, drug one, and this is the number of patients. by uh, drug two. This difference, if it reaches M, this predetermined margin, we stop uh, the experiment and say, okay, uh, drug one, uh, has better cure rate than drug 2. Then we stop the experiment and say, all right, P sub 1 is greater than P sub 2. And we have, of course, the other case that is uh, uh, the number of patients cured by uh, drug 1 subtract the number of patients cured by drug 2 uh, reaches uh, the negative of this margin. Then we stop and say uh, drug 2 is better, has better cure rate. We are curious of, of the following. Um, that is... Uh, If P1 is greater than P2, um, what is the probability 
of our experiment uh, will lead us to the conclusion of uh, P2 is greater than P1. That is, um, this difference reaches uh, minus m before uh, it reaches m. And this sounds extremely familiar because we can uh, then uh, change this problem to a uh, gambler's room problem. And first, uh, I would like to uh, say that um, in this problem, instead of a binary case, we actually we have a, a ternary. Uh, this tree right here, we have case one, we have case two, and we have case three. All right, this is case one, case two, case three, and we denote this difference by d sub n, all right? If we have case one, that is uh, patient one is cured while uh, patient two is not cured, what happens is the n goes up by one. All right. In case two, we have patient one is not cured, and patient two uh, is cured. Then d sub n goes down by one. And lastly, is case three is this difference of the number of patients cured remains unchanged uh, because uh, either we have both patients uncured or um, both patients cured. What's going on here is uh, case 3 is uh, it's not important. Because we're only curious um, of these two cases because they contribute to this margin um, changed. Uh, otherwise, the margin won't change uh, when case 3 happens, which means we are not interested in case 3. We only consider, we define the following little p being as the probability of d sub n goes up by 1 given d sub n goes up or down by 1, all right? And we only consider uh, case 1 and case 2. And d sub n goes up by 1, it means patient 1 is cured while patient 2 is not. And then the denominator, which is uh, uh, both uh, d goes up or down by 1, that is uh, this, all right? And similarly, we define q, which is uh, uh, d goes down by 1, given uh, d sub n is up or down by 1, is then 1 minus uh, this p, which equals, we just change the denominator from uh, uh, p sub 1 times 1 minus p sub 2 changes to uh, p sub 2 times 1 minus p sub 1, and uh, the denominator 
remains unchanged. And now the probability of um, our experiment uh, concludes P2 is uh, greater than P1 it then d sub n reaches minus m before uh, for m, all right? And this is the same thing as uh, the gambler's room problem. It is the gambler's fortune uh, goes down by m. before going up by M and which is uh, we can set our gambler's current fortune is uh, capital M and uh, our uh, capital N which is uh, our desired fortune um, in the last video, we learned the probability of the gambler's fortune goes up uh, by m before uh, going down by m, which is uh, 1 minus 1 over 1 minus uh, q divided by p raised to the m power, subtract q divided by p raised to the 2 m power. And this is the same thing as if we factor out um, a copy of 1 minus q divided by p raised to the nth power, we'll have this is 1 uh, divided by 1 plus q divided by p raised to the nth power. And we further simplify this to um, 1 over 1 plus p divided by q uh, raised to the nth power. You guys can verify. Um, if the computation is correct. And now we plug in the value of P and Q. Uh, this is 1 plus P is P1 times 1 minus P2 divided by Q is P2 times 1 minus P1, all right? And this is the probability of uh, this experiment concludes P2 is greater than P1. And now let's look at this probability. If P1 is greater than P2, um, and this implies, this actually implies um, 1 minus P2 is greater than 1 minus P1, which means whatever this factor here, all right, and uh, uh, let's define this factor to be R. So this equals 1 plus R raised to the mth power. And this actually implies R is a strictly greater than one number. And uh, um, as M increases, if we increase this capital M, which is a margin, uh, this one decreases. So the conclusion is here, if we increase the margin, the experiment which airily concludes P2 is greater than P1, given uh, P1 is actually greater than P2, is uh, decreasing.